Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Rhoda. This week is Earth Week, and that means we need to take care of our Earth, and I think every day should be Earth Day, but we do celebrate Earth Day on Wednesday the 22nd. This is one of my favorite books to read to my students during Earth Week, The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever seen excepting old crows is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you will still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old Onesler still lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the Wansler, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of miff muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of, out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in a snuff, his secret strange hole in his groovulous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slup, down slups the whisper my phone to your ear, and the one old Onesler's whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snurgly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now, now I'll tell you, he said, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the Swamsea Swan, the Swamsea Swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. Beautiful truffle trees. Yeah. And under the trees, I saw brown bear balutes frisking about in the bar balut suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle of fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. A glorious place. But those trees, those trees, those truffula, truffula trees 
All my life I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. What do you think he's going to do? In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle a tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with a great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a thneed. Thneed. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump. Of the tree I chopped down, it was sort of a man. Describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you have made out of my truffle a tuft? Look, Lorax, I said. There's no cause for alarm. I chopped down just one tree. I am doing no harm. I am being quite useful. The thing is a, th a th <laughs> the thing is a thneed. A thneed's a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that, fo that fool Thneed. But that very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along and he thought that the Thneed I was knitting was great. He happily bought it for $3.98. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor, stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told you. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I, list I said, Listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Onesler family to get mighty rich, get over here fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left at Week, Wee Hawken, sharp right at South Stitch. Are you blocking that? Sorry. And in no time at all in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting thneeds, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super ax hacker which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making thneeds four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please but I'm also in charge of the brown bear balutes who play in the shade in their bar balut suits and happily lived eating truffle of fruits. Now, 
Thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruits to go round, and my poor barbalutes are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Messing with the habitat. They loved living here, but I can't stay the, I can't let them stay. They have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onesler, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of the th the Sneeds I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more Sneeds, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then once again he came back, I was fixing some pipes, when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snarled, he sniffed. Onceler, he cried with a cruffless croak. Onceler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swampsy swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Glup. Your machinery chugs all day and night without stop, making Gluppity Glup also schloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old onceler man, you. Where do you think all that goo's going? You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woofully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my right, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring and biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffle of trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an ax on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle, a tree of them all. No more trees, no more thneeds, no more work to be done, so... In no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my car and drove all away under the smog, smuggered stars. Now all that was left neath the bad-smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing just gave me a glance. 
just gave me a very sad, sad backwards glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. What do you think the word unless stands for? But now, said the Wunsler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems pretty clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It is not. So catch, called the Wunsler. He let something fall. It's a truffle -a seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds, and truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it with, from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. So unless we all do our part, nothing's going to get better. So everyone has a role to play. And I hope this Earth Week that you guys play an important role to take care of our Earth. Thank you.